5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. You might have heard of the Black Plague before. The Black Plague. Another word for it is the bubonic plague. Now this plague was around in Europe, and it was around in Europe in the 1500s, or bef beforehand. And how this disease actually was trans transmitted is, there was a tick, which a tick bit a mouse, or a different type of rodent, and then it tr after it bit the mouse, it transferred the actual disease from the mouse, so this was a vector, it transferred the disease from the mouse to the cat, or directly to human, but the idea of a vector is just that it indirectly carries the disease from one to another, so from mouse to the cat, and then it could have traveled from the cat f to a human, and this happened originally in China, so this was originally in China, and then spread from China to Europe, and the bubonic plague, or the, back, the black plague, killed millions of people, it killed lots of people, at least most places, either 50% or so half of the population died within a couple of years, or a fifth of the population. So either one in five or one in two people die. So imagine every second person you know dying or every fifth person you know dying within a couple of years. That's the scope or the big magnitude of the Black Plague. And again, this was around in the 1500s. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because people had no idea about disease or anything else then. then. They had no idea what caused disease. And some of their treatments, some of their ideas of how they can try to get rid of it was, for example, to you know, not clean themselves. So they had this idea that somehow cleaning themselves would be able to give them the disease. So they, they had they had they not cleaned themselves with one of the ideas that uh, they could try doing that and then they would not get disease. But nowadays, obviously, you know that cleaning is quite important, so it actually backfired. Their philosophy or their ideas of disease weren't as it should be. So the stuff that they tried to do to try to prevent disease actually encouraged it to be given to them. So not cleaning was one example, not showering. And the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because the dot point itself says explain why cleanliness in food, water, and personal hygiene practices assist in the control of disease. So why we do why we make sure food, water, and personal hygiene is all there in terms of hygienic practices, why that's there for us to be able to have less disease. And obviously in the 1500s, the Europeans had no idea, which is why they did lots of stuff wrong, and that's why so many people died as well. But we have more of an idea, and we know that, for example, hygiene, personal hygiene is quite important, so we should wash our hands. And Dot Point says, not just to actually talk about it in terms of, you know, the you may name them, but it says explain. So we should name and then say why we do it. But we wash our hands because we have, for example, bacteria might be on our hands. And by washing our hands, we can make sure that the bacteria aren't there, we can kill them. Also we should brush our, brush your, should have been teeth, brush the teeth. And wh why that is that? Because plaque, plaque is also a form of bacteria, and plaque grows every, if you don't brush your teeth, and plaque can give you all kinds of problems. It can make your teeth decay, so by brushing our teeth on a regular basis, we can make sure there's no plaque buildup, and then make sure there's no bacteria which can actually cause harm to our teeth itself. That's why we brush the teeth. So we sneeze into the tissue. Again, we might have viruses be infected with a virus. If you sneeze into the air, the problem is that actual virus will spread. So by sneezing into the tissue, we can make sure viruses don't spread. Or different types of pathogens. So we, I'll just write pathogens don't spread. They'll go into tissue as opposed to into the air. Also, we can also make sure we should wash the hair. Why? Because, again, there's lots of bacteria in our hair as well. And it's bacteria if it will cause itching, but other things as well, if we don't actually, bacteria and other pathogens, but if we don't wash them, we'll get these types of problems, which can cause harm for us, but also eventually harm for other people as well. So we wash our hair to kill different types of pathogens. So I mentioned these are all personal, so things we can do ourselves. So we should wash our hands, we should brush our teeth, we should sneeze into tissue papers, and we should wash our hair as well. So what, can the, what are the community kind of hygiene issues? These are you know, what the society do to make sure we have less disease. For example, proper sewage is really important. And sewage is more about you know, getting rid of, for example, toilet droppings. I mean, feces. If we have, just imagine we have feces all over the actual road. That probably would be pretty bad. So we want to make sure there's a way we can have that all more hygienic. And proper sewage allows us to get rid of feces 
directly. And why do we have to get feces direct rid of feces? Because feces are more or less full of pathogens. So there's lots of diseases which are caused by feces. And if you can get rid of feces, that means we also get rid of the pathogens themselves. Now again, garbage disposal. Why would we have garbage disposal? There could be lots of pathogens in garbage. So by making sure we, it doesn't build up, having a garbage disposal system, and you have the truck coming to pick up your garbage every two weeks. By having this, we can make sure there's less garbage, which is also good because garbage causes diseases. There's stuff in bacteria, which is in food or wherever else, that will end up in your garbage. Now, proper city planning, why, what's the, that's all about the density. So we want to make sure we have less people per square kilometer because the more people are closely crowded together, the more disease there will be as well. So by having proper city planning, we just make this less density in our cities. And the use of sterilization is also really important. So this is, for example, of medicine. So just imagine you might have you know, a doctor who use, or a surgeon who uses his tools, his surgical equipment on one patient and then doesn't sterilize it before he uses it on the next patient. That will actually cause disease. That will transmit disease from that one patient to the next patient. So by sterilizing it, we can make sure that our equipment is bacteria-free whenever we use it again. And it's really important because that didn't used to be the case beforehand in the hospitals. They used to transmit diseases through their actual equipment. But now we sterilize them, so we can do that job quite well. So that was all about hygiene. So why we need hygiene. And then we explain that as well for every dot point here. And then we talk about why we need to have cleanliness in food. Well, we should wash the hands before dealing with food, and that's the same reason as before, because otherwise we can tr transmit our bacteria onto the actual food, and then people will eat that food, and they will have those bacteria in their body. So by actually washing your hands, we can make sure bacteria aren't transmitted, or different types of pathogens. We should tie our hair back in a bun, either hair tie them back or have them in a bun. Same reason, because hair have pathogens on them, and by making sure that our hair don't get into food, we can make sure we don't transmit these pathogens. Now we should wash cooking equipment. Again, the same idea. So for example, you've got your cutting boards and you will cut certain types of food on it. So for example, chicken, and we don't have raw chicken in our mouth. So by making sure we wash our cutting boards, we can make sure that we don't infect, cross-contaminate by mistake and the, the actual bacteria from chicken onto anything else. Then we have proper food storage. This means that you know we we use, for example, fridges and the like. We store our food properly, and that's important because if you leave it around for too long, if you leave your food standing for long, too long, you're gonna have bacteria growing. Too many of them. And the reason why we use a fridge is because we mentioned, you know, in, in a couple modules back, that every different organism has its ideal temperature. Now you can imagine if you're a bacteria that lives usually in you know, 35 degrees Celsius. You don't, you don't like the fridge. If your ideal temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, if you are put in the fridge, what happens to you is you actually die. So that's why I put things in the fridge, because there's no bacteria that can actually, most bacteria won't be able to survive the fridge, which means our food is clean and it's bacteria free if you put it in the fridge. If you leave it out for too long, it's going to be bacteria all over the place. Now we should wash our vegetables. Why? Because there might be pesticides which were used to grow those actual vegetables. There might still be some soil on those vegetables. And all those things are bad for us. Soil itself has bacteria, so we might get back bacteria in for the, for the soil that way. So these ways, you know, we want to make sure we wash vegetables. Do not drink or eat this. That would be bad for us. And cook chicken thoroughly. These have salmonella. Um, so these have a bacteria which are, is really damaging for us. It causes food, stomach cramps, causes diarrhea and all kinds of stuff. Chicken itself, raw chicken. So if we cook the chicken, that means we also cook the bacteria and we literally kill the bacteria. So if we cook chicken, that means we're not going to inhale that bacteria. And we won't be digesting it. We won't have it in our body. That was all about food. So this is how we should deal with food. How should we deal with water? When you remember first, before we start, where does actually our drinking water come from? This is talking about drinking water. And drinking water comes from rivers. So this is a river right here. And you can imagine, you know, there might be animals living around the river. There might be birds flying across it. So they might basically poop into it. So feces, they might put their feces into it. There might be other soil in it. You know, the water itself, while it's still quite clean, it's still not perfect. So overall, we want to have some way that we can clean that water before we drink it. And this is why we have these, and we're going to talk about them more in two years' time, but these, just these cleaning plants, so they're called water filtering plants or water cleaning plants. 
they make sure that the actual water which comes from here from our lakes gets cleaned before we drink it. And why do we do it? Well, we want to kill those pathogens which might be in the feces that were dropped into the, into the actual river or the lake. We want to remove harmful chemicals. There must be some chemicals that have gone in here through maybe farming or whatever else. And we want to get rid of them before we actually drink our water. And we might also add some useful chemicals. So fluorine is one example, and we're going to talk about that more soon. But fluorine actually is good for our teeth, and we add that into drinking water to make sure our teeth decay slow or slowly. So these are some of the reasons why we want to make sure we have cleanliness in water. We want to kill those pathogens which might have come from cross-contamination of feces. We want to remove harmful chemicals such as you know, heavy metals or anything else. And we can also add some good, good stuff, add some good fluorine which protects our teeth. Right, so ex the dot point says explain why cleanliness in food, water and personal hygiene practices assist in the control of disease. So for this dot point, know the different things you should do, but also know what it actually does. So for example, that you know, washing your hands kills the bacteria or that the removal of proper sewage means that our feces aren't all over the place and those feces have bacteria. So if you remove the feces, we have removed the bacteria. Or that you know, if we properly store our food, that means that the bacteria can't grow properly anymore because their optimum temperature isn't there. And if we clean our drinking water before we drink it, that means we kill the pathogens and we have less disease. So yeah, know these points that I mentioned, but also know why they're important, how they assist in keeping away disease. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.